Welcome to the low. I'm Boyce, and this is Leandra joining me in studio today. Hey. What do we got on the on the low today, L? So Andrew Yang is getting some pushback from his tweet about assisting a healthcare worker. You know, he's running for mayor, so you know he's doing. You know, yeah. he's helping I, out. And, <laughs> yeah, and, you know, which is which is good. <laughs> it's, it's kind of what you want your mayor to be doing. And, yeah. you know, you have haters in, in the comments, as per usual. Yes, yeah, so let's show you guys this tweet here. So uh, Andrew says, I'm going to be assisting an essential healthcare worker in a New York City hospital for a day and then pumped about it. Thank you to all the healthcare workers who are saving lives, demonstrating courage and selflessness every single day. day. And, of course, you get some good good comments, of course. But then there's these little turds in the toilet bowl kind of circle and they're draining kind of. Um, I don't know. Here's one. F you and him. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> but yeah, so he, he wrote this tweet and 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 then and initially he got a lot of pushback on this tweet with a lot of negative comments mm -hmm. um, saying this is a publicity stunt. Um do it without announcing it. That's how you're supposed to do things, and that's a, a, a what a humble brag and stuff like that. And people fail to realize that he is running for mayor. Mm -hmm. And so if he didn't do this, they'd say, Oh, he's an elitist and he won't, and doesn't know what people are going through. So he goes, okay, I hear you. And I'm going to go do something about it. I'm mm -hmm. going to go on the ground, ground zero in a New York city hospital. <laughs> and he's going to assume some risk. Mm -hmm. He's assuming risk too. He's going to have to get fitted and all that shit. And, Right. Um, go down there and, and be on the front lines and see what one worker does for one shift in one day. You know, I saw an article that he got exposed, but I'm assuming he got tested in his fine. Oh, yeah, he definitely got exposed. Yeah, yeah. one of his staffers, uh, Eric Sanchez, had it, and oh. recently another staffer got it. So oh. this this thing people are talking about is not happening tomorrow either uh, because his campaign got shut down for in-person events for two weeks, probably about a week ago. Okay. Uh, so he's announcing he's doing it. It's going to be some time, probably another week or so, before he can actually do it. Um, and plus, there's a lot of HIPAA stuff you got to worry about with hospital. Because I'm a frontline worker, too, so I know what it takes to get someone just to come observe. Uh, there's some paperwork involved and a lot of security concerns for him as well. So this isn't happening tomorrow, guys. Relax. It's going to be okay. Um, don't worry. 4,000 more. 4,000 people will die again tomorrow. Don't worry. COVID. <laughs> Golly, let's worry about what's really important here. People are dying, and you guys are worried about him doing a publicity stunt by living a normal person's life for a day, for for a shift. You know, so I think it's a huge move on him, and I think this puts pressure on others to say I, Andrew will do whatever it takes to represent the people. Mm -hmm. um, it but, sucks that he pretty much lost two weeks. You know, because like the the primaries are so soon, they're like they're in February, they're next month. No, no, the primaries are June twenty second. The primaries are June. I could have sworn I read it was like February. No, nope. June twenty second is the primary in New York City for the mayor, and the generals in like October or no, okay. I think it's in November as well. Um, but if he wins the primary, that's pretty much a, a victory lap to the general. Okay. Uh, because it's predominantly a blue district. Um. But yeah, he um he's got some uh got some real guts and, and a spine to say I'm gonna go down there because people are talking about how bad it is. I want to go see it, and then maybe they'll help him with his policy development too. Get mm -hmm. input from people on the ground, which I think is a good idea. Um, but one of the things that annoys me the most is people still insinuating that he's not a real New Yorker. Yeah, and it's just pathetic, you know. But so we have an article here. That L actually shared with me mm -hmm. <laughs> from the New York Daily News. And I like that this is a front page kind of deal here. Yes, Andrew is a real New Yorker, frankly challenging his bona fide smacks of xenophobia, which is obvious. Mm -hmm. And it looks look like at the who wrote it was, was Asian American. Look at that face. Oh, I love it. <laughs> um, but it just talks about him being challenged. Um and and this is also written like you were saying. Let's actually give her credit. 
Mm -hmm. Nina Luo, I hope I say that right. Um, yeah, who wrote Asian this article? Asian American, and yes, and she's busy at work at five a.m. Good lord, lady! <laughs> I I don't blame her. Like I I'd, I'd feel some type of way too. Like the thing is, like you know, like being black in America, we don't really have that that fight to prove that if we're American or not. Yeah, um, yeah. Like we may have the fight of like if our lives matter or not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You know, <laughs> that life. it's like their life doesn't matter, but we know they're an American. Yeah, <laughs> um, we are Eidos. We didn't have much choice. Uh, forced into this, forced into being an American, technically. Pretty much. Um, but yeah, I like how she shares her own point of view. She said, starts the article off by saying, "I was born on Long Island. Growing up, our family moved around constantly from Shanghai to St. Louis for my dad's jobs. After school, I moved to New York City." And have been working in politics here ever since. Am I a New Yorker? And if not, when do I get to count as one? Mm -hmm. I like that. And she talked about them busting his balls about the bodega bullshit backlash where he was actually in a bodega. It says so outside. Um, <laughs> it's on the sign. The owner says so. You know. Right. Um, but it's a really good article. This will be in the description box. It's it's a it's a little more lengthy. And it talks about his whole background, which we in the Yang Yang already know most about. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it really goes into depth about this and how me and you were talking before we started recording about how there's a lot of misinformation about Andrew, that people are just lazy. Right. They just believe the last thing they heard. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I, I was, you know, I've shared that moment in, on the trail where he's being introduced for a thing and they say, oh, the next guest is Andrew Yang, the tech entrepreneur from California. And he had to correct them over and over again. So now it's not about where he's from. Now they're saying he's not really from there, even yeah. though he's been there for 25 years and his children were born there. His wife was born and raised in Queens and I think it's called Flushing. Um, and they, they broke his balls about leaving the city <laughs> to, because of COVID. And, and he's yeah. like, oh, yeah, I was also helping the Democrats win back the Congress in the Senate. Exactly. You know, so he's kind of smashed that down. Luckily, he's got a great talking point for that. I agree. Yeah. That's, that's, I don't know. And like, yeah, as a as a South Floridian, I mean, you're telling me about New Yorkers leaving. You know, you better mm -hmm. shut your mouth because y'all are the reason why we have so much traffic in South Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Snowbirds. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I know if that's to like, you know, of course I'm kidding, but it's like <laughs> New Yorkers leave New York. What are you talking about? Yeah, for three months every winter. <laughs> I know, know if you're in Michigan, do I'm that's my goal. <laughs> I can't wait to be a snowbird. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is pretty, pretty uh it's pretty off-putting when you see this people attack him on his character because they can't attack him on policy. Right. Um, they can't. It seems not. like it, it seems like that's just um the the tactic that I've just been seeing, at least nowadays, I feel like politics has just become so, so surface, so shallow that, mm -hmm. you know, we're just kind of not really knowing about people's policies anymore. And you're just going after, it's like, well, you know, it's just going after what's easy. It's like, well, this person mm -hmm. is Asian and he talks about AI. So we're going to say that he's not from, you know, he's not from New York. Yeah. But it's weird. Cause it's like, if you're in, if you're a New Yorker, you, I'm sure you've seen Asian people, Asian Americans in New York. You've seen a couple. <laughs> it's a very densely populated area. I think you were saying before that that's one of the highest concentrations of Asian Americans in the city. Yeah. New York City. I believe so, yeah. And, uh, you know, correct us if we're wrong in the comments. Feel free. <laughs> I mean, like, my whole life I've been, this is going to sound so, like, stupid to confirm that Asian people live in New York, but my whole life I've been hearing about, you know, Chinatown in New York. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, it, it's just, it's just like, mind-boggling. Like, you really don't think those people or any Asian people who own these restaurants had children? Mm -hmm. Or any less New Yorkers. They don't live this certain cultural lifestyle. Right. Uh, New York is, he's, a, he's a happy guy, so he can be a New Yorker. <laughs> yeah, and so you have one of the most diverse cities that still has <laughs> xenophobic tendencies. Oh, yeah, for sure. Just come on. Well, I guess that's America. Well, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Um, but that, you know, yeah. 
New York City, I believe, is one of the most segregated cities. That doesn't surprise me either. <laughs> yeah, I believe so. Yeah, um, but yeah, they they're they're gonna keep coming at him with this silliness. Um, but you know, he he rises above the fray and just like, hey, he just laughs him off and keeps on moving. But I don't know. I want to hear what you guys think about this in the comment section. Why do you think they're attacking him for these reasons? Or we we you know, I think I know what it is. We all know it's both mostly just pure politics, and then they can attack him on any little stumble. Um, but it, it's it's. It's to be expected because right now he's Joe Biden of New York City. He's the front runner before he even jumped in the race. He was the front runner. That's true. Yeah. And you gotta expect people to punch up. Everyone's gonna punch up. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking forward to an actual debate because uh, that's gonna be entertaining. If they actually have a debate, it's gonna be beautiful. Mm -hmm. I yeah. hope. And he, I think he's scheduling some town halls too, so that'd be cool. We have people ask him questions and do some Q and A. That's where I think he shines the most. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've seen him on the trail where he, he does his normal pitch. Then he takes questions from the audience and that's when you get to those nuanced, nuanced things. And, and it, it kind of lets you know how he's, how he thinks these things out. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen people ask him really good specific questions to their own zip code, if you will. And he just shines, man. He just comes right to me. He's like, Oh yeah, I've already thought about that. But yeah. So uh, let us know what you guys think about that in the comment section. Um, and while you're here, go ahead and give this video a like, and uh, a comment about below and give us your input on this. What do you think the, the whole point of this is and how do we combat it? If you don't like it, give us a thumbs down. Tell us why we're not scared. <laughs> There's the pouty face. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we'll, we'll see you guys tomorrow. And thanks for joining us. And like always, yang gang. gang.